All right, we got the workpiece held between two the centers. Got a spur center. I don't think that's going to show up on the uh, headstock end, and just a, a ball bearing center on the other end. Now I took that to the bandsaw, as I told you, and this is how much wood I removed. You know that was uh, I knew I didn't need, so that's uh, quite a savings there. But there'll still be an awful lot of chips produced. Now I've got a piece of. Uh, High speed steel and there's a tool bit just with the old lantern rocker type tool post and uh, I'm going to start by turning the major diameter down first and uh, I'm just using a uh, sterret calipers to check that as I get closer to the dimension I will use a micrometer I like to turn wood as if it is uh, metal and that's why I much prefer to do it on a metal lathe some of you may say well that's crazy you don't turn wood on a metal lathe. Well I do. Uh, I don't own a wood lathe and uh, I just prefer this method because there's total control over the tool and the dimension. And uh, this isn't a, a bowl or a candlestick here. It's something that uh, is uh, going to be very close dimensionally. So I'm going to take a couple rough cuts and then I'll turn the camera uh, back on as I do a little bit of the turning. This is probably two hours worth of turning, so naturally you're not going to see all of this. Well, we're turning maple now, and it turned as nice as can be. I, I am running the lathe at a fairly slow speed until uh, the work becomes perfectly cylindrical because there's always some out of balance uh, going on when you've got a glued up piece. But it's looking good so far, but there's still an awful lot of wood yet to remove. Stop it here real quick and see what it looks like. Pretty nice finish too. Now you wouldn't want to use uh, common pine, but pattern makers often use sugared pine and they use mahogany and uh, some other woods that uh, are really rather expensive woods. Of course maple is expensive too. Okay, we're going to measure it. I'm down to size now. And, uh, this larger diameter in the middle and it's, it's four and a quarter inches. I made it a little bit larger to allow for the uh, shrinkage of the metal. Now we're ready to uh, remember you can use a caliper when the machine is running but never a micrometer. Wear a face shield and stand off to the side just in case any of the laminations would let loose. So you do have to be careful. Many people have been hurt uh, on a wood lathe. I don't run it as fast as what you would on a regular uh, uh, wood lathe. I'm used to metal speeds. Next thing I'm going to turn down uh, this diameter which is the core print and that'll be two inches and it's going to be on each end but I will do all of the turning on this end and then when that's done I will reverse the work so that this end is down on the tailstock end. Now the final uh, dimension here on this core print is going to end up being considerably longer than what the drawing calls for. Be for two reasons. Number one, I like to uh, saw off and throw away the center hole. And number two is that uh, uh, it is not a definite length anyway. And uh, I might damage the wood a little bit as I try to split the uh, two pieces apart. And so if there's any chisel marks or anything, it's going to be thrown away. Then too we have to, I will sand down the draft or taper on the ends rather than turn it. And I'll do that on the belt sander. This is the final pass on the core print on the end. Now I won't do any sanding until all the turning is done because there's probably just a few holes that I might have to use filler on and uh, then I'll sand those off smooth while I'm at it and I'm not real satisfied with the way this uh, glue line looks here so I'll have to put a little filler in there and also these uh, this dowel pin here since it's just made of birch it's kind of or some kind of foreign tropical wood it's uh, it's kind of shredded so I'll have to uh, s fill that a little bit too so this is progressing uh, quite nicely. So next I'll start with this step. I 
just brought this step down to the diameter, and now I've set my compound for five degrees off to the left, and as I face out onto this shoulder, that will give me the draft that I need. So here we go, feeding out with the compound. Ever so slowly. Now if we would check this with a square, this uh, corner here would be 95 degrees. That all needs to be touched up with sandpaper and the corners knocked off too. Now uh, another thing to keep checking is, uh, in just in case the spur center kind of uh, digs its way in and starts uh, getting loose, uh, constantly check your work to make sure that it's secure so it doesn't slip out by advancing your uh, tailstock wheel in just a little bit and you'll be able to feel whether or not you need to take up any slack. Alright, uh, that concludes this end other than the sanding and I'm going to uh, reverse the uh, work now. This is our last step, our last pass on the last step, cutting the feet off and we're coming right into the shoulder and then we're going to feed it out with the compound again set it not at 5 degrees like we did last time so now we're just facing that step and that gives us the uh, pattern graph that we need on that last step. Now we're going to turn this diameter right in here, which will be uh, three and a half inches, and we've got a step on each side. So I'm going to do about half of it uh, feeding uh, toward the headstock, and then I'm going to reverse, reverse the work and uh, finish it off so that I can get at that other step. Or I may decide to use a, uh, a tool, a uh, left-hand tool, and come in that way. Not sure how I'll do it yet, but... I've already taken a couple passes, but I'm uh, feeding this way. Notice that I use my stop, my carriage stop. I think it's a pretty handy way to always come to the same uh, spot on the step. After I'm uh, done and down to diameter here, then I will feed the compound out again at 5 degrees to give us that uh, angle right in here so that everything will withdraw from the uh, mold when we make a casting. Okay, I've switched tool holders and tools. Uh, the one in my hand is the one I'd been using a few moments ago, but now I have uh, a uh, left hand turning tool in here. Actually it's a facing tool. And this is one of the few times in your entire life that you will use uh, a tool holder uh, like this. But uh, they come in handy occasionally so don't throw it away yet. So we're just going to complete the turning here going toward the tail stock and up to this shoulder and I have also turned the compound uh, five degrees on the other side of zero. I've also moved the uh, carriage stop over on this side, although it's not too good of a setup, but I'm doing it anyway. So we just got a few more passes here, and then we're done. 